Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote to the Galatians because the Galatians were, they were trying to do something which was contrary to God's system. They were trying to marry law with grace. They wanted them to abide together. And law and grace are not compatible. It's like trying to mix water with oil. It doesn't happen. It will never happen. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the Galatians. As a matter of fact, in, in Galatians chapter 3, he called them foolish Galatians. Who do it? You cast a spell on you. Number 4, he's going to expound on it. And he's going to talk about the two covenants. And here how he addresses it. I want you to listen. Tell me, me you that desire, desire to be under the, the law. law. Do, do you not fear the law? law? For, For it is written that, that Abraham had two sons. The one, one by a bond woman, woman, and the other by a free woman. woman. But, but he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which, which things, things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which generates the bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And I swear to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with your children. But Jerusalem, which is about us free, which is in bondage with us also. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that prevailest not, for the desolate have many more children than she which hath a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. He was born after the what? The flesh. And you persecuted him that was born after the spirit. You were born after the spirit. But the spirit promised. So our justification is by the spirit of God. Just walking in the spirit, being justified by the spirit of God. No, to be a preacher, you know, um, to walk in the spirit means that you, you, you only do what the spirit leads you to do day by day. I mean, who could be so hypocritical? Who? Every move they make is by the spirit. By the Holy Spirit who leads you. Who does that? Who, who, who does that? So if if it's walking out of the spirit, then so you're in the spirit 24 hours a day. You, you the Holy Spirit is guiding you 24 hours a day. Nobody does that. And people they will not stop and say, oh, okay, it can't be that. There's no condemnation to them who are justified, not justified by the flesh but by the spirit. So Paul referred to it as he is born after the flesh. He is born after the flesh is by his own effort. His justification by his human effort, by the spirit, is by the grace of God. He's the spirit of grace. He's saying, Christ died for me. God promised me that I'm justified if I believe his son. That's what he says, believe, he that believes in him shall not perish. That's a promise God gave. I believe in God. I believe on him. I believe on him that justified and ungodly. My faith is come to this righteousness. Read on the scripture. Nevertheless, Nevertheless what said the scripture? Cast out the bond woman and her son. For the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. We are not sure of the bond woman, but of the free. Therefore, we are not under the flesh. We are not walking by the flesh, or by the spirit. My justification is not by the flesh. Flesh is human effort. Amen. Flesh always speaks of our human effort, our own righteousness. The spirit speaks of the promise of God, what God has done. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, it is by grace we say, through faith, it's not of ourselves, it's not of works, it's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. 
You see, as long as I do it by my flesh, I'm going to boast. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to tell about my goodness. I'll, I'll call me and say, let me tell you about my goodness. Did you, do you know I, my, I never taste a drop of alcohol? <laughs> I've never tasted a drop of alcohol. A spirit never came into my lips. That's what I'm telling my goodness. After the spirit, I said, let me tell you what the Lord has done. He was nailed to the cross for us. Yes. Thank you. He died for us in Calvary. That's what the spirit, I'm talking about the spirit now. So I said, there is therefore now no condemnation of who are, who walk not out of the faith without the spirit. In other words, who does not try to be justified by their human effort, but accept justification by the grace of God. That's of the spirit. Amen. You, you, follow, you follow what I'm saying? After the flesh is, see the flesh speaks of the law of sin and death. If I do wrong, punishment. If I don't reach up to the standard, then I, I have no right to, to receive the goodness of God. That's the flesh. The spirit says, okay, God is gracious unto you. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for the God. When, you hate, when we hated him, he loved us. He gave his only begotten son for us. He loved us in everlasting love. All oh, those are promises of God. That's the spirit. I have done the boast about I can only say, Oh God, you love me so much. I can't say anything else. The flesh is a boasting. Condemnation, you know there's a beautiful movie that was shown, um, The Lion King. And Simba was running around with a white hog and a weasel singing Hakuna Matata. When he should have been raining because Scar told him that he caused his father's death and everybody's angry with him. In other words, as it were, the gods are angry with him. He felt condemned. And the lion, a lion, the king of beasts, the animal that has no fear, is scared because he feels condemned. And he's running around with a weasel who is giving him instructions <laughs> and telling him what to do. A weasel. Instructing a lion, and that's what the devil has done. Yes. He has enlisted the scars into the pulpit to preach condemnation to God's people, to make them feel bad. So that rather than raiding as kings upon the earth, they are singing Akuna Matata. I remember many years ago, I told you the story again, but some people be here to cut this book on the internet. Here we are in church many years ago, we a guard is demon possessed, and we are attempting to cast this demon out. And the whole church is there, and everybody's talking in tongues and, and saying, come out and come out, you know, the gospel forever, come out and come out. And then the girl got silent and said, okay. She bent her head like this, and she raised her head. I'm coming home. Just when I come home. When I come out, all those whose life is not right, I will tear their tears. <laughs> I have never seen prayer warriors disappear like that. <laughs> I think it was the pastor and myself. 
The wife said, because I knew the promise of God, that I made right by the blood. Every man jack this away. People suddenly lost the desire to cast out the evil, lost the ministry. And I've, I've heard people teach that, you know, you have to ensure the life is clean if you cast out demons. Excuse me? Didn't you read your Bible? Jesus sent out 12 apostles. One of them, the Bible says, was a thief named Judas. And the Bible said they all came back and said, What? The devil is a subject to us. Judas, the Bible said Judas was a thief. Yes. Judas sir. says that. And he was one, he said, God, the Bible named the 12, and Judas was one of them, and he was a thief. But Jesus authorized them. When you understand that God has made you rise by the blood, no devil can tell you about any flaw in your life. Amen. 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 You see, when you understand what justification by the blood, you understand, I represent Christ in this situation. And listen, he sees you how you see yourself. If you justify, if he sees that you're justified by your own effort, then he will tell you. Oh, you're trying to talk to me? I see some flaws in you. <laughs> because if my justification is by the flesh, then he's going to attack my flesh. But my justification is by the spirit. What if he'll attack? Yes, attack Jesus. Yeah. Because when I'm talking, I'm dripping with blood. <laughs> and he has to see me as I see myself. Oh, I see myself dressed in Jesus. Amen. Because he either justified, and those are justified, I want. He justified me. When he died on Calvary's cross, he was to make me righteous. Praise God. So I see myself dressed in his righteousness. So I'm not devil to examine my flesh. Now, if you listen to preaching, they will tell you, and unless you are right, yes, sir. Unless your life is right. Mm. Then you can't do, and that's what made the church impotent. Because the devil tricked them into saying, unless your life is right. So people rock, walk around with life thermometers. <laughs> Checking people's in temperature in church to see whose life is right. <laughs> and who can be prayer warriors and who can't be prayer warriors. I know who hindering the spirit from moving. <laughs> hindering their spirit.